Welcome to the Sunday of the General Conference of the Wesleyan Church 2016. We're glad to have you with us uh, this morning. Now today's live stream is, we kind of have bookend worship services. This morning's worship service at 10 o'clock will be led by Global Partners. Tonight's service will be, will be led by the Church Multiplication and Discipleship Team. However, that's not all we've got for you today. Yeah, so this morning we're pleased to be joined by Richard Wah. He's the president of the Wesleyan Methodist Church in the South Pacific. Uh, Richard, there are many of our viewers who know very little or maybe even nothing at all. <laughs> so why don't you give us a, a flyover of the Methodist Church in South Pacific? All right. Thank you for the welcome. Well, the Wesleyan Church has been in Australia uh, for 65 years and uh, more recent in New Zealand since 2000, and in some of the Pacific Islands since about that time as well. So we have uh, 180 Wesleyan churches, okay. uh, 250 Wesleyan ministers. All right. Um, just to follow up there now, talk a little bit about the history. I, before the pre-show, I was telling you I got to be with uh, Dr. Wayne Schmidt a couple weeks ago, and he was telling me that... Um, you broke away from the Methodist Church. Talk about that a little bit and some of the history here. In, in Australia, it was a plant uh, from uh, the Wesleyan Church, but in New Zealand, a number of us came from an evangelical Methodist background. Okay. And uh, through a complexity of issues to do with theology, sexuality, and mission, uh, we decided we couldn't walk any longer in the more liberal, uh, in fact, radically liberal Methodist Church that we wanted to stay in the John Wesley family, and the Wesleyan Church was a perfect home. So we formed uh, the Wesleyan Methodist Church of New Zealand in 2000, and immediately affiliated with the, the global Wesleyan Church. I understand through Dr. Schmidt that there's been some really tremendous growth in your movement. Yeah, so we, uh, we were all compelled to church plant, and uh, so church planting has been you know, part of our DNA since we started in 2000. And we planted about, I think it's nearly 30 churches in that time. Wow. Um, can you give us a, a, an idea of maybe the, some of the size of those churches? Well, some of the churches are ethnically streamed. Some of them are specialist uh. churches. Uh, some have buildings. So I think our largest church is touching about 300 people. And most of the churches would be about 100-ish. But we're in a very secular environment. So... New Zealand is the most secular English-speaking country in the world. Oh, wow. I didn't About know that. 10% of the population would be actively Christian. Wow. Okay. Wow. Um, so uh, talk a little bit about um, your, your time here. Um, uh, what, what's it like coming here, being at the conference? <laughs> well, I've been to general conferences. Uh, this is the fourth one, I think. So I um, know the North American ways. And it's always, um, you know, very encouraging. It's inspirational, wonderful fellowship, uh, teaching time. I think our opening service last night was hugely inspirational. And so for the, for the North American church and a changing church, uh, a changing nation in terms yeah. of your culture and diversity, uh, we're already a very multicultural nation, but I've discerned in the last 15 years the uh, United States is a changing nation. And the church needs to be a changing uh, church in terms of reaching out and touching those people. Yeah, yeah. good. Yeah. So what's, what's something, when you come to a conference like this, what's something that you hope to take back to your churches there in New Zealand? A, a number of things. One is that, um, you know, we belong to a global church. Yeah. And I think as Christians, you have to understand it's not just the local congregation, which is so important, but it's the district it's the nation, and it's the world. And if you understand what it means to be a global Christian, you are immediately much more mature in your missional understanding. So that, for me, is something. And here is one of the leaders from the South Pacific. We take away networking opportunities, resources, books, information, insights, and things that we can translate to our context in the South Pacific. And it's, it's not going to be an exact uh, copy. You have to... You have to discern, is this that's working in Indiana or Michigan or California, is that going to work in, in Auckland, New Zealand? Yeah. Right. Richard, I wanted to ask, uh, we're, we've been speaking about what you uh, may take back, but what do you think is something that would be a gift? What is something that from the South Pacific perhaps would, uh, something we should consider here in North America? Yeah. Well, oh, thank you for that invitation to make a comment. <laughs> I, I think one of the things is, in, in New Zealand and in the South Pacific, 
we're a very multicultural context, and I think we don't have the same barriers between people or the same ghetto mentality, if you like. So we have some insights about what it means to be multicultural, distinct from just being multi-ethnic. Mm. And we'd like to be part of that conversation, as I think the Wesleyan Church in North America is determined to be more missional as it touches every group, whether that's African American or Hispanic or, or whatever, yeah. you know. And, and I think in the light of our Wesleyan history, which is a, a special history, right. the North American church needs to work at that. And I think in other multicultural, multi-ethnic environments like us, we could speak into that conversation with grace and truth. Yeah, well, that's Wonderful. a good. Yeah, that's a good word. A great question too. That's great, Richard. Thanks so much uh, for taking time out. I know that it's a whirlwind for you, and so every minute's precious. Yeah. Thanks so much, um, and and also um, I want to thank our viewers for being with us. Let me just give you a quick reminder of uh, what we have here in Buffalo, New York. A lot of people may be wondering why the Wesleyan General Conference is going to be held in New York yeah, State, in Buffalo, New York in 2016. I can think of so many great reasons for us to have it here. Can't you tell oh, me? Oh, listen, historically, just two hours east of here, the founding of the Wesleyan Church, 1843, men like Orrin Scott, Luther Lee, and like-minded men and women who on the basis of conscience, on the basis of conscience, left their denomination. Oh. And, and intentionally align themselves whoa, whoa, with whoa, the... Whoa, whoa, Tony, Tony, Tony. I'm talking about buffalo wings, brother. No, I, I, I don't think you understand. Kim, let's see if we can He's help Keith out. He's missing the whole what? point. What? Yeah, yeah. T talk to him a little bit here. Listen, Keith, in coming to New York State, you're returning to a state where there's evidence, physical evidence, of our church being involved right. in the underground yeah. railroad. In fact, in 1994 in Syracuse, New York, in the basement of this church, they found these clay statues that were believed to be made by runaway slaves. The church was a Wesleyan Methodist church and the pastor was Luther Lee. But you know what else they have in Syracuse and in Buffalo? Wait, so many great yeah. places yeah. to get wings. Oh, oh, you, you don't get it, you get it. 90 miles from here, there's a place called Seneca Falls, New York. Do you realize that the very first women's rights convention was held there? And do you know where it was held? Wesleyan Chapel. I mean, it was a Wesleyan church. Just a few months ago, people gathered there yet again to talk about the redesign of the $10 <coughs> bill, which will feature what? a woman. Do you know what women like when they come to Buffalo more than anything? I'm afraid I know. Wings! Yeah, that's right. They wings. love Buffalo wings. Don't you agree, Kim? You are fixated on wings, but there are more important things here. <laughs> okay. All right, for, for example, all right? For example, for 70 years in Syracuse, New York, we had the headquarters of the Wesleyan That's Methodist right. Church. Yep. And if there hadn't <coughs> been a fire on January 15 in 1957, destroying yep. the publishing house and headquarters building, we might still be here right. in New York State. There's significance here. You guys are absolutely right. I mean, we have such a rich history as Wesleyans. And I don't think we realize a lot of times how much of our history is tied to the state of exactly. New York. And I, I'm excited to be here, to be a part of General Conference. And even if you're not able to be here live, you can watch the live stream and enjoy the festivities with each of us. We look forward to connecting yep. with you online. Now, guys, please, can we go get some wings? Uh, oh, let's go. Okay. <laughs> So this morning...
Good morning. This morning's service, we're excited to uh, head towards the service. It's going to feature the Parade of Nations. We have over 20 nations that are represented here at the General Conference. And uh, this morning's service is the Global Partner Service. And we're going to hear about all of the work that God is doing around the world. Dennis Jackson and his team has just put together an exciting morning. So get ready for that Parade of Nations. So four years ago was my first general conference, and I had heard about the Parade of Nations, but nothing really prepared me for it, to see these people marching in with the flags of all the different countries yeah. uh, represented here. And it, it was just, it was really overwhelming. You kind of get a picture of what God is doing around the world. So Tony, last night and today, we're really not going to be doing a whole lot of business. It really is focused on right. worship. Uh, this morning's put on by Global Partners tonight by the CMAD division. It's really reports of what God has been doing. So how important is that, that before we get into memorials and before we get into elections, that we we kind of talk and celebrate yeah. what God has done? Yeah, I, it's vitally important because what General Conference is, it's it's a business session, right? And nothing can be more boring and dry than business, especially if you look at the memorials, it's very legalese. Whereas, yes. whereas, resolve, resolve that. Um, and what I say is that what happened last night, what happens today is the church being the church. It, it helps us to capture the bigger picture of what we're trying to do. Right. So all of this behind the scenes tweaking of law is is only so that we can be focused on the vision of reaching people for Jesus Christ. And so it sets a tone uh, for the whole conference. Uh, most folks, uh, Westlands in North America, on a Sunday morning, you're getting ready for your local church. And so you might be watching this a little bit later on. And I'm just, uh, this is always one of my favorite services of uh, General Conference. Uh, they're actually, <coughs> excuse me, they're actually. Hey, Heath, Heath, let, let, go ahead and get, get your breath. <coughs> so I want to ask you a question. So what if someone's out there, I mean, and they're, they're live streaming this on their phone during their worship service at church. I mean, are we cool with that, or what's going on? Well, I did check, and I have, <laughs> I have it on the highest authority, that if for some reason you were not able to attend church and you live stream, <laughs> Tony Casey can send you the official notice that you were present. If you're going for the perfect <laughs> attendance pin, Tony Casey is the official person to talk to about that. Uh, now, however, the, this is cool. Our church has Sunday school at 10 o'clock, and one of the Sunday school classes is going to be streaming Good. the service, That's cool. watching that during Sunday school. That's so, cool. again, it's just an honor to be a part and provide this uh, resource. Uh, they're getting ready to start the service. A lot of great presentations today. A lot of people who have given so much of their lives to Global Missions, and Dennis Jackson always does a great job. Uh, he's done a great job leading Global Partners these past four years. And after yeah. the service, we'll be, uh, we're excited to have Chad McCollum and Jackie Vick from the Global Partners office on with us for the post show. So stay right here. If you got to step away and go to church, the Wesleyan HQ YouTube channel, subscribe to it to make sure you don't miss a single minute because, listen, it will enrich your life. Uh, so for Tony and Kim, I'm Heath Mulliken. And for the rest of the team, we hope you enjoy this morning's service. Yeah, see you after. Crazy with a question mark? Yeah, probably. Can I get you to just take that and hold it in your hand? And I don't know if you're like me, but I love perforated things. If you can just tear off that card, you got a pen, so you don't have to ask any person around you or anything like that. And I'm going to ask you to fill it in. Band's coming in, they're going to lead us in a song in just a moment. But you say, well, you know, you're just looking for us to, you know, we're not taking an offering this morning, we're not doing anything like that. Um, we just want to know, would you be willing to play your part? Join the team. Yes, contact me about becoming a missionary. Here, here, here's what I know. 
We're over 2,000 people in here. God must be speaking to somebody today. And I believe that he's already been having the conversation with some of you and it was like, boy, man, got me today. Or maybe he initiated just a simple conversation in your life and you're saying, you know, I think maybe I need to just sign the card and say, can we talk? We've got a great mobilization team. You don't just sign up today and go out tomorrow. You can where you live, but to go somewhere else, we're going to have to work with you. And that's great. Maybe you'd recommend a new recruit. Uh, hey, put down the person next to you and see if they get a call. You can mention my name. Yeah, I don't do that anonymously. And then down at the bottom, it just says my name, my email, my phone. We'd love to make sure that if we get your email, you get one of these amplifiers. A lot of you already do, but we'd love to make sure you get that. It tells about what God's doing all around the world. We'll even mail it to you if you don't have an email that you can get it from. If you want us to call you, we've got to have a phone. And if you'll fill that out, in just a minute, we're going to collect it in just kind of a unique way. You don't have to come forward. You're not going to drop it on the platform. We're not taking an offering. We're going to do something really simple, and that's this. This week, as we were out there at Houghton, we launched with a song called With Everything. The band's going to lead us in that in just a moment. It's just this idea that, you know what? Open our eyes to see the harvest that's out there. And then just this decision that we're going to worship God by giving our whole lives to Him. Because the ultimate expression of mission is worship. And we want everybody to experience that. And so here's the deal. In just a moment as we begin to sing, I'm going to ask the Global Partners Tribe to just stand. And if you've got one of these cards, I want you to stand with them and hand the card to them. And they're the collectors today. No big upfront deal. Nobody's checking. We're not videotaping the crowd. But if God led you to even to put your address on here, your email to say, get me in the game. I got to know what's going on. I want to pray. We're forming prayer partnerships more than we've ever done before. We cannot do this alone. But by turning the card, you're saying, I'm in. I'm in. I want everybody I want everyone to be reached with this life-changing gospel. Missionaries, would you stand? God, I pray that even now you would seal our hearts. Thank you for what you're already doing. Thank you for what you've done. It's an incredible, incredible deal that we get to do this together. And so, Father, even as we sing this song, may it be more than a song. May it be an anthem, an expression of our highest worship and deepest love. We pray in Christ's name. Amen.